Hi guys, I want to go over a discussion of uh, some of these new age uh, field dressings that are getting more and more attention and discussion online, uh, both on YouTube as well as in various discussion forums. And wanted to kind of go over the history of these things and their relative effectiveness when it comes to controlling bleeding and severe traumatic wounds. Um, so a little bit First and foremost, I think that's important to talk about is before anyone gets the idea that these simply are applied and control bleeding, um, needs to reevaluate things entirely. Uh, you need to know basic first aid first and foremost. You need to know how to control bleeding with direct pressure, um, application of pulse points, um, elevation of an extremity if the wound is in an extremity, uh, arms or legs. <clears throat> um, methods such as that. Um, also uh, pressure dressing application, so on and so forth, before um, even entertaining the idea of purchasing and using one of these various uh, new age dressings. So a little bit, that out of the way, <laughs> a little bit about these. Um, uh, let me start first start off and talk about um, kind of the standard dressing that has been, <clears throat> excuse me, in use for some time. Uh, that is the Curlex gauze uh, dressing, um, gauze dressing in general, but um, uh, more or less today you'll you'll find um, both in the hospital and the field, uh, Curlex is oftentimes used. It's uh, easy to uh, pack into a wound. It is very absorptive, so it absorbs fluid, uh, blood in this case, and other fluids in the wound very readily. Um, you can compress it well. It does not have uh, friable thread-like uh, kind of components to it like a lot of gauze can have and so you don't have to worry about um, leaving behind in the wound once it's removed small thread particles so it has a lot of advantages um, over some other uh, wound um, packing materials um, the z-pack that you see here is very similar to the curlex um, it is a field dressing um, primarily um, used uh, by medics uh, for um, control of bleeding. It is very absorptive like the Curlex. It compresses well. It is called Z-Pack because it's shaped kind of like the letter Z. Each individual fold is folded on itself in a Z-like pattern. Um, it makes compression of that a little bit easier. Um, so compressing, compressing that within the wound a little bit easier, that is. Um, so those are kind of your standard dressings. Now going over the various versions of these new age hemostatic dressings, I want to go over a couple different um, brands. So this all kind of historically evolved in the early 2000s, uh, about 2004, 2003, 2004. Um, you had kind of the arrival on the market of some of these dressings. Um, even for the civilian population, um, it, it initially started off uh, more or less for medics and whether it be paramedics or military medics. Uh, there, these have been tested uh, through and through, both through independent studies as well as uh, constant field use of these, especially in the theater of war. Uh, various uh, brands that you may uh, see here as well as here in discussion are Hemcon, Woundstat, and the two we have here, which is Quick Clot, which you see here, a couple versions of that, as well as Sealox. Now, going over the evolution of these dressings, uh, there basically are, are three generations of these things that have come to be. Uh, to begin with, we had the first generation, which I have only one example of, and that is the Sealox uh, brand. Uh, what you had here in the first generation were granules that were basically sprinkled into the wound bed itself and then compressed with an additional secondary bandage held in place and allowed them to do what they needed to do to control the bleeding. Now, they're a little bit different in terms of their formulation. The Sealox um, contains something called Chittisan, and that's uh, basically it's a sugar that's obtained from the hard outer shell of of seafood, primarily uh, we're talking about shrimp, crab, and lobster. I know it sounds a little strange, but uh, that's basically what it's comprised of. And the way that works is it, it, it causes what they, they refer to as swell in gel. What it does is it absorbs the fluid and produces kind of an adhesive gel-like substance, which helps to seal the wound. 
Um, it's not a problem for those with shellfish allergies. Um, people with shellfish allergies do not need to worry about that. Uh, that that's more having to do, their allergy is more triggered by the consumption. So as long as you don't eat this, you should be fine. <laughs> the application, topical application of this should not be a problem. So just a little FYI for you, for those who have shellfish allergies, not a problem with this product. Um, the quick clot version of this, which I don't have uh, represented here, were also granules. But in this case, it was made from a different type of product. Uh, this is called zeolite, which is kind of a mineral compound, uh, contains oxides of aluminum, sodium, magnesium, and silicon. And that helped to aid in clot formation by adsorption of water. Now, by absorbing water fluid in the blood base of the wound, in this case, it cause an exothermic reaction. So if you ever heard about people getting burned from these dressings, it was the first generation product. And in this case, it was the quick clock first generation, uh, the one using the zeolite that caused an exothermic reaction, which could cause um, burns to the, the tissue in the wound bed itself. Pretty significant ones at that. So that became a problem, not with every application, but enough where they realized they had to change their formulation which is in fact what they did with the second generation. Now they continued, in this case quick clot that is, continued to use zeolite. However, they used a, a partially hydrated uh, version of it. So it cut down on the reaction, the chemical reaction that would occur when it came in contact with a fluid, in this case blood. So it limited the amount of reaction, so therefore limited the amount of heat generation, thereby causing to a lesser degree any kind of potential for burns um, there is still some heat generated, but it has been uh, greatly minimized compared to the first generation version of their product. Now, Celox, their second generation product, uh, continues to use uh, the Chittisan. Um, what they, however, have done is taken the powdered version of the Chittisan and impregnated it into a gauze bandage. So instead of pouring powder into the wound, now the powder is actually on the dressing that you're then applying directly to the wound. Uh, the quick clot version is the same way. Once again, with these little beads impregnated into this sponge, as they call it, and applied directly to the wound. So advantages, instead of having all this debris, this powder debris poured into the, the wound, which later has to be debrided, has to be removed. Um, generally, in this case, we're talking about someone going to the hospital, having them irrigate the wound, um, in some cases having to scrub out the wound, which, of course, uh, starts the bleeding all over again. Um, it, it became a bit of a problem. Now, granted, in the hospital setting, they have uh, better means of controlling bleeding than you would in the field or if left to your own devices. So this becomes a problem if you're doing your own wound care, your own wound treatment, because you can uh, reinitiate that bleeding. Versus this, uh, this product, you don't have to, there should be no material left behind the wound when the dressing is removed. Now, there's a potential if you lift the dressing out that it could lift part of the clot that's formed beneath it and, and bleeding could start again. There, there is that potential, that possibility, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about removing uh, a lot of this powdery, like granular rather, like product that you have with the first generation. So that's the benefit of the second generation. Now, they've gotten even better than the second generation. Uh, moving forward, we have now the third generation of hemostatic uh, dressing. Now, I only got, have one example here. That's the Quick Clot Combat Gauze. Uh, Celox also makes their own version. Um, now, Celox continues to use the Chittisan. Once again, that's the, the sugar, um, sugary substance obtained from the shellfish. Um, they continue to use that, but they have a new product in the market. They call the, uh, I believe it's the Rapid, the Celox Rapid. Um, and it basically has cut down on the amount of time that you have to compress the bandage to the wound significantly. Um, they talk about a one minute compression time versus a three minute compression time with the regular gauze. So Celox has evolved into basically a faster acting um, type of application. Um, it still basically requires you to apply direct pressure to the wound um, but according to their own studies, and I haven't seen any independent studies on their new version, um, basically they say that it should control arterial bleeding within two minutes. So we'll have to take their word on it. Now, the combat gauze, which is Quick Clot's version of third generation dressing, 
actually they've gotten away from the zeolite and have moved on to something called kaolin. And what kaolin is, it's a natural clay, um, it, literally a clay-like substance, it's a, or volcanic glasses, as some also refer to it as being. Um, it's comprised of alumina silicate, which uh, when it's exposed to blood, it initiates uh, the clotting cascade. Now what the clotting cascade is, is basically there's various factors within your bloodstream, for those who don't know, uh, that are triggered when there's a bleed. And that causes a, what they call a cascade, or a sequence of events to occur that eventually results in the formation of a blood clot, and which of course stops the bleeding. So what's interesting about the quick clot version is uh, this particular kaolin material, this clay-like volcanic glass material, actually initiates the clotting cascades, or accelerates it, I should say, the clotting cascade that naturally occurs. And so it basically it speeds it up. And by activating, um, if you technically want to know factors 11 and 12 of that clotting cascade, and the chain is started much quicker than it would if it was to start on its own. So they say that it helps to accelerate the, um, the eventual fibrin clot formation. Um, however, and I please um, encourage you to look at the, the area below on the information regarding this video. I have listed plenty of reference material. Uh, so know that none of this is my own um, idea as to what I feel is best. This is all well-researched and documented um, studies that have been done to prove the relative effectiveness of these. Now what's interesting about that is that you may think one is better than the other has been proven uh, conclusively be better than the other. Well, strangely enough, other than that the powder had that unfortunate side effect, the and there's an obvious benefit of the third or even the second over the first generation, but in terms of these generations over standard dressing, uh, there have been a couple studies have shown that standard dressing, if applied properly, um, is equally effective to these. Now, that may sound a little strange. Why is there even a market for these? Why is our military and paramedics, field medics, using these products? Um, well, there are plenty of studies that also show <laughs> that these are more effective. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Unfortunately, you know, and I've listed both down there, so you can see there have been studies on both sides. But my feeling is, this is really an evaluation of cost versus benefit. And since most severe traumatic wounds, uh, the cause of death is generally due to hemorrhage, due to bleeding out, um, my feeling is that the cost of having something that at least has the potential to be better than that may be worth it. Um, price range for these products anywhere from about $12, $15 for the second generation sponges, all the way up to, I've seen upwards of $50 for the uh, Hemcon, which I don't have uh, here. And my understanding is, I think the Hemcon also uses the Chittisan, uses the shell like the shellfish um, uh, material, also, if I'm not mistaken. But that can run you upwards of $50 for one pack of their product. So you have to look at it from a cost benefit standpoint. I mean, teach their own. Uh, my feeling, again, if these products, they're definitely no worse than a standard dressing, but have the potential to be better than a standard dressing. So for me, it's definitely something that I felt was uh, something good to purchase and have in my own field kit. But you make up your own mind on that. Once again, all the information is below, folks. Uh, you can check the links. You can do your own um, Google searching if you'd like. Um, I, I encourage you to use um, definitely the scientific studies versus somebody's YouTube or forum impression as to what works best. Um, they have done extensive studying with these dressings, both the U.S. military as well as various independent labs, um, generally using um, controlled laboratory setting to do that in. Um, so it, you know, it may or may not do the best at simulating a real bleed in the field, but they do usually use pigs in this case and um, I mean, surgical, exact surgical cuts in the arteries and, and have applied these various dressings with um, various results. So again, I think any of these products are great. I would shy away from buying these first generation products, these powders, because of the mess they create in the wound bed. The potential for infection that could result if you didn't remove all those granules from the wound afterwards becomes kind of a cleaning nightmare. Great back in the day when that's all they had. The second generation, much better. We have the gauzes impregnated with those granules. 
and now the third generation where they have refined these materials and once again in the case of quick clot have used a completely different material called kaolin versus the zeolite which the kaolin has been shown to actually initiate the clotting cascade so all out there all being utilized by the military and field medics um, you'll hear various independent reports online from people who use these things about their particular experience and you know for me that that could very well be but um, I'll always go with a scientific study and um, there's plenty of those out there that have evaluated these especially when it comes to the military and again folks I have listed all the material below I've also listed a couple of the company website product information sheets as well as the method to which these are applied to be applied um, one one real quick thing I should point out um, I did see one study now we're talking about the third generation the Sealox gods this is second generation but the third generation the rapid one I spoke of um, what's interesting is there is an antimicrobial quality apparently to Chittasan which is interesting um, it basically um, disrupts the membranes of gram-negative bacteria. So that, that's a little bit different than the rest. Uh, the rest are controlling bleeding, which it is doing, but apparently it's also at least somewhat effective against gram-negative bacteria. I mean, none of these you're going to leave in the wound bed for an extended period of time. This is to control bleeding, then it should be removed and the, the wound should be um, properly treated from that point in whatever manner, whether the wound be closed um, or allowed to heal by second intention that is healed from the inside out um, but at the same time these are not meant to be left in the wound for an extended period of time uh, usually this is more measured in hours versus days but um, keep that in mind as well it's really important to read the product information sheet on any of these things I mean they look pretty straightforward when you look at it I mean gauze is gauze um, to many but they're there really is a lot of specific information and it also has to be used properly so the advantages to any of these dressings really you're talking about you know controlling bleeding so in terms of bleeding to areas of the abdomen the groin the buttocks the head the axillary region that is the armpits um, where use of a pulse point or a tourniquet is just not possible these really help to control bleeding um, in a much uh, more direct fashion and really that's your only option in those areas so they can be used however in addition to pulse points um, a tourniquet use any slowdown in the blood flow if we can control it upstream as it were slow it down by occluding that vessel that's causing the bleeding by through direct pressure and once again this is first aid stuff folks but um, important stuff you can't use these dressings without knowing this stuff and I hope to cover this in a later uh, video but um, you know in, when you're talking about controlling the bleeding upstream up application of one of these is made much easier it's going to be much more effective so knowing how to use these things properly is really important in combination with basic first aid when it comes to controlling bleeding anyway um, these basically are ready to use there's no mixing or prep required um, there's really not a whole lot of training involved other than what I just spoke of um, you do need to know basic first aid you do need to know maybe the specifics on like I spoke of the granules the potential problems with that versus some of these and, and washing them out irrigating those wounds properly if you were to use those um, and what's great about them is they are super lightweight they're durable they last a long time have a very long shelf life even in extreme conditions hot or cold and they're fairly safe to use with exception of the exothermic reaction problem with the quick clock prop back in the first generation with the, um, the zeolite but otherwise they're really you know safe to use so easy for a civilian person to use um, definitely something I think most people should have um, but once again, no basic first aid first and foremost before you move into investing in one of these and become familiar with how to use it properly. A lot of people buy things, throw them in their bag and, you know, don't put the time, um, the investment of time into figuring out, you know, how am I going to use this if ever I needed to and, and what are the, the various um, conditions to its use. So keep that in mind, folks. But um, I hope you enjoy the links below. Hopefully it gives you a little more information and understanding um, on the background 
of the effectiveness of these products and gives you a better idea on how best to spend your dollar and, and be able to effectively treat a wound in the field. All right, I wish you all the best in your prepping, people. Take care.